Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got a big one for you today. That 11 and 0 Infinity Conquest deck, yeah, it's a Valentina deck. It's sick. We've also got the start of our big new season giveaway, so get yourselves ready. But before we go anywhere further, we've got the Snap Judgments League Season 2 happening. This is $1 entry for $700 potential dollars in prizes. The $1 entry is seriously straight up, just so we don't take a complete bath doing this. We will end up losing money on this tournament. It's not a big deal. We're perfectly willing to. We are trying to bring competitive tournaments to Marvel Snap and give players a chance to play against some of their favorite content creators. I will personally be playing in the Snap Judgments League Season 2, as will Lambie, as will Tucker, as will Super Tech God, and a ton of other great creators. So if you want your chance to play against all of us, then check out the Snap Judgments League. The link to the Discord is in this video. You can also check out patreon.com slash snapjudgments for more info. We are kicking off that season pass giveaway. Next season is the Exiles Blink season um, with Really, really cool um, variants. I really like both that Sabretooth and that Psylocke they're giving us with the new season. Um, I think Blink is a really cool card. 5-6, it replaces the last card you played with a card of a um, higher cost. So you can go like Jubilee and then replace Jubilee with a 5 or a 6, which just seems crazy good. You can play Blink another lane. This is going to be an extremely, extremely powerful card. I think it's really obvious that this is going to be great. Now... We are giving away five Blink Season Passes. We give away 15 a season at the very least. We almost always end up giving away more. We give away five right here on this YouTube before the season kicks off. You have to like and sub, and then you have to leave a comment, a different comment on every day's video from here um, until Monday's video. Every single comment on a video from Thursday to Monday is another chance to win. And the comment will be something different in each day's video. Today's comment should be, the you want of the deck of the day? Like, I do three decks every single day. Do you want one of those as deck of the day as a short? Or, and do you want my bundle guides as a short? Um, I'm strongly considering doing bundle guides as a short just because they can get lost in the longer videos. We're, we are going to review that bundle later today. The um, Captain Marvel one that everyone's talking about, the gold bundle, that'll be reviewed later this video. But in long videos, these things can get lost. Would you rather have those be shorts? And would you be willing to watch? Please let me know in the comments. You can absolutely say no. I don't actually care whether the answer is yes or no. I just don't want to make them if uh, you feel like that's not what you're looking for from the channel. So please let me know in the comments. And that will be how you enter this part of the giveaway. We also give away five season passes on Twitter slash X. Um, we're actually going to kick that off Friday morning, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. I've had an intensely busy day. I'm genuinely exhausted. We barely got this out, but you know the rule. Snap Judgments is seven days a week, no days off. You will get this video. So I'm going to have to wait for that Twitter giveaway, though. I just have to put it together, write it up, etc. So you'll have that by Friday morning. And again, we'll have more giveaways to come. So if you missed the first round of giveaways, make sure you keep it here so you get some more chances. All right, our first deck is Lady Conquest Blade. Yes, this is very similar to the deck from yesterday that we featured from Shuri Enjoyer. Um, the Shuri Enjoyer deck has also gotten quite a few Infinity tickets that I keep getting tagged in, including from our friend Foz or Snap. How are you doing, Foz? This is Safety Blade's version, and it's, I believe, um, two cards different. It's still a Valentina, Loki, um, Elsa, Angela deck. This one's running Red Guardian and Armor. I really like those as tech pieces in this meta. Um, I don't know how much Infinity Conquest you all play, but you run into a lot more Destroy than you would think, particularly Infinity Conquest in Marvel Snap. Why, I'm not quite sure, but Armor often gives you a free win in those matchups, and it is so worth it just for that. But also, Armor and Luke give you ways to just sort of win certain locations. Um, the negative two, negative three locations in the case of Luke, and the destroy all the stuff you play there location in the case of Armor, they are free wins with these cards in the deck, and that's a free snap equity in Conquest. It's really, really powerful. All right, so you can find Safety at twitch.tv slash safetyblade. Safety Blade, if you're unaware, is an absolute genius deck builder, writes articles from Marvel Snap, good friend of the show. Um, he's just completely brilliant at this game. He's uh, playing some Marvel Duel now, so he doesn't release quite as absurd an amount of cool decks as he used to. But this one is an absolute certified banger. And if the tech cards aren't to your style, make sure you check yesterday's video for the Shuri Enjoyer version, which is, again, like either 9 or 10 of the same cards, but incredibly strong. 
if you have Valentina and Loki, this is what you want to be doing. We will look at more um, non-Loki Valentina decks tomorrow, but for today, Loki is where it's at. I think that this is the best card in the game. This, sorry, the best deck in the game right now. Um, is Valentina required for it? That's going to be a conversation later. I asked five top 100 players what their initial thoughts for Valentina are, and there was no consensus, so we'll talk about that later. Um, Elsa can only be hope if you don't have Elsa. I know that's another series five card. Don't know what to tell you. Um, Snow guard can be Murray Hill. Valentina, and people are calling her lots of things. I'm calling her Vale because one of my favorite students' name is Vale. So uh, Vale can be Cable, and Red Guardian can be Cable, Cosmo, Rogue, or Hope. All of those are perfectly acceptable changes. All right, so I think this is the deck right now. This is the best thing in the game. Everyone who's playing these, who's good at Marvel Snap, is like, oh, this is broken. Oh, this is broken. Oh, this is broken. It's not unbeatable. So Loki, the way this is usually discussed in card gaming terms is that we have Tier 0 decks and Tier 1 decks. Tier 0 decks are like the only thing you should really play if you want to be competitive. They are so far and away better than everything else. Tier 1 decks, there's often several Tier 1 decks. Loki is a Tier 1 deck. It is the best Tier 1 deck, but there, it's not a Tier 0 deck, and there are other things that can compete. So turn 1 is Quinjet versus Snow Garden. Those are really kitty. Um, if you're going Valentina or you think you might go Valentina, please, please, please get out that Quinjet. If not, Snow Guard is perfectly fine, especially if you already have Loki and might play that on 4 and don't have Coulson. Turn two is Angela or Valentina. A lot of that's going to depend. I um, Do you have Kitty going? Then you might go Angela and Valentina on three. That's perfectly fine. This way, Valentina, by the way, can, can, can give you um, Agatha. So if you're going to do that, it's better to do that on three. And then if you have Kitty, you can go Kitty. You can go Angela on two, right? And then you can go Kitty and Valentina on three. And then you've got that whatever on turn four. And if Agatha pops out, she just immediately plays herself on the next turn, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, other turn three options. Hope get, um, ooh, Hope isn't in this version, right? No. Hope is cut from this version. Sorry, I, I utilized the last one. That should be, um, I just said the wrong name. It's Elsa versus Coulson versus Luke versus Redguard. Um, if you got the kitty thing going, then all of a sudden Elsa is great. If you drew with Snowguard and Valentina and you're planning to Loki, then getting out Elsa is really good. Coulson's going to fill your hand, and that's not necessarily something you want. If you haven't drawn, then Coulson takes priority because you want as big a hand as possible to Loki. Luke, you do either when you have certain locations or when you have that Valentina and it's worth it. And Red Guardian is if they have like a naked Angela or something along those lines that can help you in the game. If not, you save that for later. The rest of the game is fairly simple. You're basically trying to play Loki, or you play 3 plus 1, or you play a Valentina card slash a Coulson card, right? Loki, or a 3 plus a 2, or generated cards. And then turn 6 is you just basically want to shang whatever you can. If you can shang one lane and then armor what they want to shang, assuming you got something big enough from Coulson, that's really cool. Or you made yourself a stupidly huge Angela. These are ways to win the game, and they are so, so, so good. All right? This is, again, a version of this is the best deck in Marvel Snap for ladder, for conquest, for whatever. If you play with discipline, sometimes you're not going to see the stuff you need. You're going to see like weird combinations of stuff, right? You're going to get like a uh, snow guard into Angela, into Luke, and then not see Loki. And you're going to be a little frustrated. That's every deck in Marvel Snap. Don't freak out. Be patient. Play for the hands that have multiple combos. Combos being Kitty, Angela, Elsa, any two more or less. Um, Quinjet, Coulson, Quinjet, Valentina, Valentina, Luke Cage, or obviously anything that draws you some cards and Loki. You also are looking for opportunities to snap based on your um, counterplays. If they're leaving naked big cards, then all of a sudden Shang-Chi means it might be worth it, or they're running Cosmo. Be careful of that. If they've got the naked cards for Red Guardian, depending on what that card is, that might be a snap condition. If that card is Wong, you're relatively safe. You're in pretty good condition. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody, and you try this and succeed, because this is, again, the thing to play. 11-0 Infinity Border, multiple Infinity Borders with this archetype right now, all over the place from all sorts of great players. Play this deck. Also, hit that sub button, hit that like, hit that comment, it's the only way to win, and it really helps out the channel. If you're willing, we'd appreciate it. Questions of the day. I know a lot of you know the answer to number one, but hey, anyone who doesn't, it's worth knowing. Cicerone Bazara asks if you get a variant for a card, if you also get that card. No, you can play with the card, card's variant as if it were the card, but you will still have to open the base card eventually. Sorry. One of the easiest ways to make the community happy would be to change that, but they haven't. 
Two Ties is curious what my wife does for a living. I speak a lot about my job. I'm a teacher and very rarely about my wife's job. My wife's name is Carla. She is a paralegal um, at an immigration law office. She is brilliant at her job, works to help an absolute insane amount of people, and I'm extremely proud of her and love her so much. Uh, Paper C, I answered a question from yesterday and I misunderstood the question. Once the decks of top leaderboard people, I explained how to get to the website that has the leaderboard. There is no way to get the decks of top leaderboard people. Except there's like two ways. I mean, I guess you can try and find them all, right? Like you can do what I do and try and track them all down. The other ways are you watch my videos and you watch Cam's videos. Um, Cam gets a reasonable amount, largely of the Americans. I um, talk to a lot of the top infinite leaderboard and am perfectly willing. I spend a decent amount of my time on Marvel Snap content trying to find top players and asking them if they're willing to share their decks for a feature on the channel. And the easiest way to get um, top decks from all over the world in Marvel Snap is to be a member of this channel to watch these videos. Sorry, it just is. So SD Don't Be Evil asks, how about them Knicks when it looked like the Knicks were going to beat the Sixers, and now we have no idea what's going to happen. Game 6 is tonight in Philly. Um, Joel Embiid, real good. Y'all, Tyrese Maxey, real good. Uh, and as a long-term New Yorker, I know never to trust the Knicks. Um... Look, if the Knicks are going to make a conference finals with this team, this is the year. They've got a banged-up Philly leading into a banged-up Indiana. They don't have a prayer in hell of beating Boston if Boston's healthy. But this is the year. Like, everything has lined up perfectly for them. So if they're going to make it, that'd be amazing. But um, they are the Knicks, and they are known for snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. If you'd like your question read out in tomorrow's video, please leave one in. All right, Iceman has gained over 30,000 ranks. Iceman's a member of our Discord, has gained over 30,000 ranks with this Hella deck. I'm featuring this today specifically because you know what Hella beats the crap out of? Loki, and you should be seeing a lot of Loki right now. Hella has a very, very strong matchup into Loki um, because if they don't get Loki exactly right and then draw exactly right, they have just a hand of bulky things that they can play one or two of, and you get to Hella and bring back a whole bunch of bulky things. Iceman has been absolutely rolling with this list. Um, went from like 40,000 to like 2,000. I guess it's more than 30,000. When I made the deck, it was uh, only there. You can see I made this deck a few days ago. I've been waiting for the Loki meta to truly take over to feature it. So this is a deck that you should absolutely play if you are sick of that Loki bullshit. This is also one of the easiest things to infinite with because, uh, yeah, people stay in against Hello when they really shouldn't. So, um... Corvus is needed for this deck. Red Hulk can be Giganto. Cannibal is the big difference maker here for the Sandman playline, but you can try Arrow or Odin. They are both way worse. All right, so again, this is an amazing Loki answer. Turn one and two, you blade when the target is right. And the right target is usually not death. It's usually infinite, magneto. Ooh, it's usually just infinite or magneto early because you really don't want to hit Red Hulk until it gets a couple ticks on it. Um... You also fairly often just pass and hold Blade for later because you'll have an extra energy if you Corvus, and if Corvus checks Blade, you're not exactly sad because if you draw Hella, you'd much rather check Blade than Hella, right? Um, turn three, you're playing Corvus or Lady Sif, and you'll know when the decision is made. If you um, have Hella and a smaller hand, then please play Lady Sif, especially if you have Death in hand and like three, um, and three... Six costs, so you basically do the math. What is the percentage of if I chuck two cards, I hit Hella, versus if I chuck one card, I don't hit Hella. And you play whichever one makes more sense. You can also just pass a turn, whatever the hell you draw that isn't Hella if you have Hella in hand, and then you can take that extra card and take the extra chance of Corvusing. Because turn four is fine of just still getting set up for the deck. Turn four is Corvus or Sif or Jubilee. Um, if you did the Corvus Sif thing, Jubilee is perfectly fine now. If um, you haven't drawn Lady Sif, and Hella is the only six in your hand, don't Jubilee, please. If um, you haven't really discarded anything big, and Hella's still in your deck, don't Jubilee, please. If Hella's the far right card, and Blade is still in your deck, we you understand the pattern I'm getting at here. Um, if you can get a big card out of Jubilee, though, like if you Jubilee and out pops an Infinite, to your turn five is definitely Sandman. If not, you've played Corvus ideally by this point, then your turn five is whatever six drop is of the biggest size. And um, if you played Sand, so your turn six is supposed to be Hella, right? You can Hella on turn five, but I prefer it on turn six. Or if you Sandman turn five, right? If you went, I don't know, who cares? 
Corvus or Sif into Jubilee. Jubilee grabs something big, and now you're ahead in that lane. And then you Sandman to make sure that lane is nice and chunky. Then you Cannonball, and that Cannonball should be able to win you the game. It's a real, real nice feeling. All right, one last look at this deck. This is a really cool deck. Props to Iceman for the idea of throwing Cannonball in here with Sandman. I think it really, really does take this and give this an extra win condition. That really does help the deck in a way that the Odin stuff sort of junks up the board the way you don't like. Um, this is very good against the meta where a lot of people are filling board spaces. And if you go Sandman, you're just kind of screwing them. If you go Cannonball, you're just kind of screwing them. So again, try this deck out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's really great, even if it's not from someone famous for Marvel Snap. All right, Comet Crushing is the new Captain Marvel bundle. This is the best gold bundle we've seen um, in, I don't know, five months, four months, something like that. God, it's May, five, almost five months. This is an, a very good gold bundle. Um, for 5,000, uh, 5,000 gold is generally, sorry, okay, 3,000 collector's tokens are generally about 4,200 gold in the general vicinity of 4,200 gold. So you're paying an extra 800 gold, but 800 gold for 3,000 credits is absurdly good value, right? So like, this is just really good value. If you've been saving gold, like we've been telling you to, this is really good, you should get grab this. It's also worth noting that a lot of the bigger bundles coming up are actually good value again. There were those like three or four months where they gave a shit value, and my guess is everyone stopped buying things because, um, well, all of a sudden, the data mine bundles are very good again. And I'd just like to remind you, if you're curious about my thoughts on those or the variants from uh, the data mines from yesterday's patch, I have those as a $5, pay $5 and $10 Patreon exclusive video. Um, if not, guess what? I'm going to review all them as they come out any damn way. So you can just wait at, or, you know, I'll do them as shorts as they come out. If that's your pre if that's what you guys tell me in the comments. So don't stress that. Um, and if you just want the data mines because our focus is new cards and new decks, that is in yesterday's full video. So again, check that out. All right. So I asked, oh, I don't know why there's a number six there. I'm telling you, it's been a day. All right. I asked about Valentina. So Sizer, his exact words is, I am not so impressed by it. The way Sizer's playing Loki, um, Cable is preferred. This was tried and found a one. Shuri Enjoyer, however, loves it. Thinks that Valentina goes in the best Loki decks. Valentina and Luke take away some of the Loki dependency from the deck which is really good. It gives you a way to stay in and often snap because they can't know what you drew. It's fundamentally Sir Enjoy's argument. Interesting, right? Okay. Um, Safety Blade says not essential, but better than Cable, strong card. Again, um, I think that that's the closest to the middle, but like a strong card is much higher than other people. Meanwhile, Miley, who reached, who's a top 20 player who reached the uh, top two in the Snap Grand Prix says... I don't see it being played over cable, maybe in other shells, but I prefer other card generation. Tanjo, the current number one player on ladder who plays Loki, says cable's just better, IMO. I asked Sizer, Sizer said it's a good card. Um, I asked Sizer, I just said Sizer. I also asked Dot Geo, my personal pick for best player in the world right now, despite not being number one, won the Snap Grand Prix, wins friggin' or comes in the top of every tournament and has been number one multiple times, um, says it's a really strong card. Not like broken, just a really strong card. So do you need to get Valentina? Hmm. There's plenty of tier one Loki decks without her. I don't think so. At least that's my initial. I'm going to give this another day and ask some more people, and I'll have my advice for you, as always, in Friday's video. Hopefully you like this little feature. If you want to let me know if you like it, I think it's really cool to hear what top players think of new cards. This is the first time that top players have been torn like this. Well, I mean, I guess I've only done this one other week. I actually did this two weeks ago, and then I was like, why is this not in my video? Um, I did this for Red Guardian, and I was like, why is this not in the video? So I did, I put it in the video for White Widow, and I liked it. The reception was good, so I'm going to try and throw this in every video, because it gives you a nice summary of what some really, really great players think of this card and whether you should get it. And again, my advice is still tomorrow, if that's what you care about. All right. I know this is another Loki deck, but this is wildly different. Uh, this is, I know it says Santi, but his name is uh, Santi Dubo, Dubos. He is a streamer under the name Dubos, D-U-B-O-S-S. -S. I featured his deck with Gnome, and at the time I had said, I haven't seen him I haven't seen him stream enough to have a really strong opinion. Well, guess what? I have now. Dubos is fucking awesome. Made the top uh, 16 of the Snap Grand Prix, top 100 player. Really, really kind and friendly person. If you can show some support, please show some support. Really, 
really a great person. And the second I saw this deck, this is one of two decks from the Snap Grand Prix that I knew, knew I was going to have to cover because they're so good. Especially because this is a really nice home for Valentina, where she is not required. If you replace her with Cable, this deck is totally freaking fine. All good? All good. This deck, though, expensive. Like, shit. Oh, sorry. Jesus, it's been a day. All right, Snow Guard Series 4, right? That's the only Series 4 card in the deck. Then White Widow, Jeff, let's pretend Val. Oh, Mobius is Series 4, so two Series 4 cards. That's 6,000 tokens. White Widow, Jeff, uh, Red Guardian, Ms. Marvel, Loki, Cannibal. So this is an expensive deck, right? Valentina can be Cable and you'll be fine. So, like, I don't know what to tell you about that, but if you have access to this, this is one of the strongest Loki decks in the game because it is extraordinarily un, uh, unexpected, at least unless this video blows it up. Um, well, I really want you to check out Dubos, and I've got another really cool deck that Dubos showed me for tomorrow. I'm also, like, this deck, I like to put the surprise decks toward the end of the video because fewer people watch the whole thing, right? And this way, if you watch, you sort of get rewarded with the deck that steals cubes. Not that all these decks aren't great. Again, the first deck, I think, is a version of the best deck in the game. But you can steal cubes when people don't know what the hell you're doing. And if you're playing a Loki deck, right, you drop Snow Guard and uh, Mobius and or Coulson, and they're like, oh, Loki deck. And then you drop a Professor X, no one thinks that's coming. Then you drop a Cannibal, no one thinks that's coming. That's how you steal extra cubes. And since this is later in the video, people will know it's there, and you have a chance to do that. Again, check out the homie Dubos, twitch.tv slash Dubos. Snowguard can always be Marie Hill. It is always way worse. Jeff is phenomenal for Professor X. Widow for both Professor X and Cannibal. And Valentina is really great. Cable is the main replacement for all three of those, so hopefully you have at least one or two. Mirage, Medusa, and Quake are decent shouts as well. Um, although at that point, we're getting towards a different deck. Medusa is pretty good with Professor X. Doesn't matter for Cannibal. Quake is just a really good card. You can try, um, if you did, if you were running Maria Hill for Snowguard, I might try Scarlet Witch so I have an extra way to get rid of shitty locations. Rogue is the obvious Red Guardian change or uh, Mobius change. Cosmo and Luke make some sense too. We've talked about Luke as a card that you want to play with Valentina and for stealing cubes before. And lastly, you're going to need both Cannonball and Loki. Duh. Oh. All right, so um, this was the top 16 of the Grand Prix, and it's a really, really sick list. It's really hard to beat if you don't know what you're playing against. Turn one for this particular deck, I prefer Quinjet to Snowguard, because that Valentina is really important here. So Valentina is over, because um, Loki is not always like your main game plan like it is for the other list. You can Loki, but you can also just be like, oh, I can do Professor X stuff, so I can win that way. I can do Cannibal stuff, so I can win that way. So Valentina is better than White Widow, is better than Jeff. Uh, turn three, Coulson is generally the standard play for this deck, right? This doesn't have any of the like other hyper-powerful ones. You're deciding between Mobius and... um. You're deciding between Mobius and Red Guardian when the case is right. If your opponent's got a Loki, then you want a Mobius. If your opponent has a naked important card, then you want a Red Hole. Red, Red Guardian. Turn four, a Loki or um, the Vale Coulson card or Ms. Marvel. Any of these are massive power plays at that point. Um, turn five, your like whole goal, if you haven't Loki'd, is Professor X. And turn six, Cannibal. And that's how you play the list, and then you should be able to win. Like, there's just a lot of power in this deck. Um, if you can go Valentina card, and Valentina gives you a good target, and then drop Professor X on it, and then Cannonball somewhere else, enjoy your cubes. You could also conceivably end up doing something like uh, Ms. Marvel into lane that only has, like, a White Widow or whatever in it, into Professor X, then drop a Jeff into that lane, or move a Jeff into that lane as well. Get a lot of, lot of value that way. Awesome deck. Props to Dubos for this very cool deck. And we got something else awesome from Dubos for you tomorrow. All right, certain tiers of support for our channel come with On Air Thanks. That is the $10 Patreons, my most loyal fans. Thank you so much for the love and support. We have Abigail Gieslin, Mandatory Burnout. We have Cables, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Fathor Newman, Good Dog Gamer, This Is The Way, Scottish Homie, Inc., Jay Neverett, J.D. McDonaldino, Keredix Lee, Koi Ray, Pyrophoros, The Goat Seeker, Denman Falcon, Doku, Philip Rakovich, Haplo, Kenny Loggins, Rob Silverman, Juan Diego Labed, The Biza, X-Force V, Skippy G, 
Snap Judgment season, League Season 1 champion, Tommy Nyquist. Black Dahlia. The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble. Ryan Wood. Kev Cihota. Luna Chris. Louis Antonez. Bot Supreme Models. Brian Kaufman. Tristan H. Martin. Fuzzy Dunlop. Spectrumix. Oot. Matt H. Mikey Hijinks. The hell was that? There was a bang outside. Um... Oh, I don't know where I was. No Flex, Ocularis, Craig Sterry, Pretty Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, Two Ties, The Pirate King Tucker, The Homie Min, Rito in Disguise on Twitch, and of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for. He's not that good at guessing games. That's a personal joke just for him. He'll get it. Sorry, y'all. I'll have a more universal one for you tomorrow. All right. I'm done tonight. I need sleep badly. This is going on the Patreon, and then I'm right to bed. Peace.